the Joe Rogan experience. You know, I think one thing that young boys and and men as well need in this world is guidance mm-hmm. and mentorship. And uh, to get that from martial arts is one of the best ways and one of the most uh, one of the most fulfilling and satisfying ways. So I, I found you from a video that a bunch of people sent me of you uh, working with a young boy who was uh, having a hard time uh, dealing with the pain of like punching through a board, you, you know the video, yes, yeah. and just the way you were communicating with him and letting him know that it's okay to cry and that, you know, just express yourself. And it was refreshing and it was authentic, but it was also like, you could tell like, that kid is gonna get a lot out of that exchange. And I was like, I wanna meet that guy. Well, yeah, man, I mean, that video, opened my mind up to really what men were dealing with inside. Because when that video went viral, our offices at our nonprofit had to shut down. Really? Okay, so the Cave of Adullam, the martial arts program you're speaking of, is under the umbrella of our nonprofit, the union. And so when this video went viral, my wife calls me, who was our executive director. She says, Jason, is there a video that's going viral? And I'm like, what do you mean? 2016, I didn't really understand the terminology. And sure enough, this video started racking up a lot of views. Shortly thereafter, our phones wouldn't stop ringing. And it was men from all over the world crying to our staff, calling in crying, saying, I want to be free. I'm tired of holding all of this in. I wish my coach would have talked to me that way when I was going through. Yeah, there it is right there. Yeah, that's it. Well, it's, it's hard to find a good mentor and I think every man needs a mentor and you know one of the things that martial arts does that I think is really important is it gives you these goals to work towards as you move through a belt system or whatever kind of system that each martial art that's different has Mm -hmm. as you develop your skills and you, you you get more proficient and you improve you you have like tangible progress and you can see it and I think there's a lot of people that go through life not exactly sure where they stand, mm. where they're at. Mm. And I think martial arts provides you with real feedback in one of the most, I think one of the most emotionally and physically difficult things that a person can do. Yes, and so many people don't realize the young boy in that video, Bruce, he was actually had a fear of failure. He had broke that board easily the week prior. But because of this test and the pressure and everyone watching, he just froze on his non-dominant hand, and he mm. couldn't break through. So he broke down crying, and I wel- welcomed his tears and said, look, we cry as men. You know, let this go. And men, and I love about martial arts, more than sports, it makes you face your fears. And nothing like if a punch is coming at you, a kick, or if you're grappling and you're concerned that someone's going to take your back and choke you. I apply all these principles in life as well. And so when you give a man or a male a safe space, to really be emotional and let go of the anxiety that he feels every day, the father wound, his fear of failure, his lack of confidence, where he can have a moment, we call it a moment on the mat, where you can stop the training and you can express what's overwhelming you in that moment. They transform instantly, man, and it's a a great thing to see. And I've never seen anything work like the arts. Even with my son, he's 13 years old, you saw him, you know, six, one and a half, Everyone says, you're going to play basketball. And it's like, no, it's other things that I want to do. And so even with sports, I say, son, it'll give you some confidence. But when we spar, we're training, the anxiety he feels, the voices, oh, man, uh, Chris hit you again. What are you going to do about that? How are you going to maneuver? How are you going to respond? And I allow him to break down in that moment. I say, okay, cool. Now it's time to recover. Reflect on it. What's the lie? What's the truth? Do you think this man is not supposed to hit you? He's a skilled fighter. The goal is not for you to be the best. The goal is for you to learn. Mm. All right. So when I give them that freedom to feel, to feel the fear, now they're not, they don't succumb to it when it really happens in real life. And so that's why I love the arts, especially the grappling arts, which I hate. I didn't discover till later in my training because nothing like someone invading your space. <laughs> you know, we can keep distance striking and it, we're comfortable here. But when someone invades your space or when a problem happens in your life where it's so close and personal that you can't just shake it, you have to learn how to buy your time and maneuver and don't let it come around you or you can get tapped out by the stress of that situation. The arts is just amazing if it's taught in a way that men could apply it to life. How how many years have you been mentoring young boys? 
I would say almost 16, 17 years now. And how did it get started? Um, in 2000, and, well, I founded our nonprofit in 2003. And from there, uh, my father wasn't actively in my life. You know, he was around but wasn't there. And I had what's called a father wound and basically just an absence of a male figure in my life, specifically my father. Uh, he was verbally abusive. You know, I could make, if I knocked this cup over, I would get cursed out, you know, things like that. So I had to overcome a lot of that. So in Detroit, I saw a great need for uh, black boys to be mentored. And so at first I started the Cave of Adullam with just martial arts. But then I quickly discovered after these boot camps, boot camp programs kept failing over and over again and scare straight programs, was that our boys didn't need more discipline. They needed more love. Mm. So then I made the Cave of Adullam more comprehensive. So I still use the arts, focus on what works, but also give boys a safe space to release the trauma they're dealing with in their lives, the emotional pain, the lack of confidence, all these other things that they're dealing with, and give them this space where they can release it and become strong. So that started, I had my first pilot in 2008. And then after that, um, 2013, I was awarded a grant for um, just a developing the cave. And that's when we just started going full time in our own location. And we haven't looked back then. We have almost 500 boys on our waiting list. Wow. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was, it was interesting, Joe. I, I thought it was just a black thing, you know, because, again, if that's all you're around, you think that's the only youth that are dealing with these issues. I had a group one time, it was multicultural, which was great. It was my first time. And I saw white kids, you know, that I I cared about were struggling so much and weren't used to releasing what they felt. And one of them uh, direct messaged me, a 16-year-old. He says, Mr. Wilson, please don't ever forget about us because he was concerned because um, there was a lot of school shootings at the time. He says, a lot of times we're abused and we don't know how to process this emotion, then we'll grab a gun and it's the only way we know how to express ourselves. It's no different from a man who was volatile and abusive to his wife. You know, I used to hit things in my home, Joe. I'm not, you know, proud of saying it. You know, my wife would say things that would trigger me and I would knock holes in the wall just in anger because I didn't know how to express hurt or sadness or just feeling dismissed and passively dismissed for how I felt. And as a result, I became a very unstable uh, man mentally, emotionally, and um, I was just what I I call just a masculine male. I wasn't comprehensive at the time. And so I saw a direct correlation when I allow a male that freedom to feel, to be angry when you're upset, but then teach you how to reset from that anger, how to use that anger for good, because anger isn't bad. It's only bad when it call, you allow it to make you do bad things. The greatest statistic I love in our academy is that over 78% of our recruits improve their grade point average by one letter grade without tutoring. That's because we allow them to be who they are inside, allow them to live from the good in their heart, allow them to talk about the things they're experiencing at home, the the things they're experiencing at school. We don't just go on to training in martial arts because then they could be great that day in training physically, but leave there still mentally uh, traumatized or emotionally damaged. And so the cave is, is just that it's an it's a, it's a institute or an academy where we allow boys to feel. You know, our mission is to teach, train, and transform boys into comprehensive men, men who are physically conscious, mentally astute, but spiritually strong enough to navigate through the pressures of this world without succumbing to their negative emotions. So when you're doing this, you're you're learning yourself and you're also teaching these kids. So how much of a process was it to develop the curriculum, to develop this program and to figure out what is the best way to address these these boys and their insecurities and their issues and how to how to give them st- give them strength and give them love mm-hmm. but also give them discipline also teach them how to how to get through work through pain mm-hmm. work through emotions it must have been oh, man. a it, lot of trial and error it was a lot of trial and error um more so joe i had to become transparent um in that moment when that video went viral none of my recruits really ever seen me cry you know i was still just tough, man. And at the time, my mother was going through dementia. So I'm still trying to develop this curriculum. I'm saying, okay, it's coming along, but it's still missing something. 
And what it was missing was giving men the freedom to be vulnerable in any given moment and for them to feel that liberating power. When my mother developed dementia, Joe, um, she was like my sensei, man, uh, meaning the emotions that I could hide in martial arts training because where I came up, you couldn't express that. You know, they would, you know, once school I was at, they would just rush you. The instructor would say, everyone on Jason. And, you know, we would shake going into this school. Our hands would shake because it wasn't just grappling. We dealt with real knives. you getting kicked, no pads, none of that, man. But You dealt with real knives? Yeah. So you're doing, like, knife Yeah, because this whole thing is, like, every, he's defense. a masterful teacher. A lot of this stuff is choreography. Mm-hmm. Okay, you see some of the gun defenses and things like that. It's like, come yeah. on, man, that wouldn't work. Right. The way he taught us is, like, if someone has a knife, if you can get away, go. Uh, I think Jocko said the same thing. If someone has a knife, go the other direction. But if you have to defend yourself, first thing you need to realize is that they should cut you. If it's just your uncle drunk at a barbecue, they should cut you. Can you deal with that pain and that emotion of seeing your own blood run down your arm and still eliminate the threat? So these things we would practice with knives because he says if it's plastic in your head, what happens when a real one comes? I couldn't express really who, what was going on inside of me that would make me feel the fear. You know, the cave needed that element. It needed to say, why are you pulling back? Why aren't you applying that armbar? Why are you scared to get thrown when your partner needs you to practice his own? And we tie the throws, especially judo throws, to a fear of failure. Because as you know, in judo, if you're not relaxed when you take that fall, it hurts significantly more. In life, if you don't just go with it and allow yourself the freedom to make a mistake or freedom to fall or freedom to fail, when you hit that ground, when you fail to hit that wall, it hurts that much more. And so what I had to do was first allow my students to see what hurts me. My mother had a stroke one day, and my wife comes in and said, hey, you need to leave immediately. Your mom has had to get rushed to the hospital. I start breaking down. And all of my kids, imagine all of them and the fathers there surround you, hug you, and pray over you, just just hugging me. And at that moment, I said, this is what they need. They need to see a comprehensive man, someone who's strong but sensitive, someone who's courageous but compassionate, someone who freely lives from the good in their heart and doesn't allow their fears to stop them from living. When that happened, Joe, these boys became not only greater at martial arts, but greater sons, greater community servants, greater students, able to deal with bullies. One of my students, a beautiful kid, Josiah, short, curly hair, beautiful personality. He was getting bullied at school, but he thought it wasn't Christ-like, you know, or the Christian thing to do was to defend yourself. You know, you're supposed to take it. I'm like, I don't know where you got that from, I said, if someone is trying to harm you, you defend yourself. So the bully grabs him one day. Ogoshi, he grabs him from behind. He throws him, kicks the legs out, and slams the bully down to the ground. You would think he would celebrate just defending himself. But what made Josiah the proudest was that before the bully hit the ground, he pulled up on his hoodie to stop his head from hitting the cement. Hmm. Wow. That's when I knew, I said, this is it. Where the good kids, the gentlemen, the kids who are bullied and overlooked can defend themselves, turn on the lion, but reset back to the lamb. No one wants to be uh, prowling all around, defending and looking rough all the time, having to hit and being just in that fight or flight mode 24-7. Someone tries to harm you, you defend yourself demonstrably, but you reset. You don't ever allow your kind spirit to conform to something that's callous. And so that's the main principle that we teach is do not live from your fears. Live from the good that's inside of you. Watch the entire episode for free only on Spotify.